Check out my brand new sound design course along with all of my samples and presets by using the links below. So welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're gonna be having a chat about the song Follow by Martin Garrix and Zed. I made this back in April and I wasn't gonna make a video on it, but I figured somebody might benefit from it or get inspired from it. So um, let's hop into it. Now, as far as the actual synth layering, you guys can check this out for your own. I'm not gonna to go too deep into it here, but we have four layers for the lead. This one is the layer that gives it most of the character and gives it that detune effect. So the second one is more of a plucky sound because that one was really soft. And then following that is, it's like a whistle type of sound. Similar to the one in the Mesto Limitless video, which you guys can check out if you wanna dive into this type of sound a little more. But the main thing here is the filter resonating so high that it creates a, a tone with the white noise. And it just makes it really dirty too because we're still getting some of that noise in there. And then the key tracking, actually puts it in tone of whatever note you play. And then the final layer is this little nitric synth shot, which nitric's not out yet, but nice little dirty layer. And I like adding in these sampled leads. I think it just gives it a little bit of dirtiness and I just like how they sound. Real quick, the mixing here, there's not much happening in the buses. Um, it's just some EQ, which will shape it a little bit. For some reason, I was using Sound Godizer when I made this a little bit, which won't do that much, but um, everything for the most part is being routed to one bus to side chain it with the Fruity Limiter. But the sub is to a separate bus because I usually side chain the sub a lot more just in these type of songs. And this lead melody is actually this, it's not really a melody, it's just playing the top voicing of the chords. So look at these notes right here, we have A, a sharp B, and then the same thing over here, we have A sharp B for the chords. So when we get that lead in the drop, this just makes it more impactful because the lead is also an octave higher than those chords. So we're getting top voicing of those chords and it just really accentuates the entire, that entire progression. Because that progression is just carrying the entire song because it is pretty unique too. It's definitely, that's 100% a Z progression because it just has that medieval video game type of feel. It's really interesting. Interesting. If you guys want to get more inspired by these type of Zed sounds, um, I would consider looking into some of his older music and some of his remixes. These two chord layers are pretty typical, just uh, detune saw square. That's that main rich layer. And then this one is more that warm saw wave. So the five voices with no detune, the no detune gives it that warm feel. Um, you know, the old school Martin Garrix type of vibe and then the envelope is opening up the filter. Gives it a little bit of movement and then that's pretty much it. We have some compression in there too. And then the bass layers, these are relatively simple. We have the sub. For the sub, I actually, I just take FL Studio's advice and I just cut out the sub at 70 hertz. Maybe, you know, I think 100 might be good. It is just a sine wave in this preset, but you know, some just some distortion there, but that's all that's all being EQ'd away in the uh, post EQ. And then we have this gritty bass, and this is the most interesting part of the song, in my opinion. I made videos on how to make this sound in a similar way using kick wavetables. It doesn't sound great. I think I did it right here, actually. I think it's good to do that, and it is an interesting technique, but it's it's a, it's a little bit of a guessing game. So I use a saw wave here. I did a little bit of FM just to change up the tone a little bit. And then the main thing giving it that formant type of feel is the phaser in the filter. And the phaser filter does the same exact thing as an actual phaser. So if we put this to freeze, put the depth to zero, and then we can just mess around with this, uh, with the actual filter center, that will give us the same effect. But sometimes it just makes more sense to do it in the filter because it's a little bit different and I like to mess with the drive a little bit too. And then we cut the highs out of this because when you do stuff like this with that pure saw wave, it can get really buzzy. Yeah. And then that's also pitch bend going down 12 at the end of each. And then we're bouncing around this bass a little bit. And you hear that a lot in most of Zed's songs, new and old. And then for the drums beneath this, I was just going for something that was clean. So a clean kick and then um, just some elements to fill up a lot of space here. So we got. And 
And on the offbeats, I have a couple of things layered here. We have some layered snares and claps and noise just to make those offbeats a little more, a little more impactful. And the second half is a little more energetic, a little more upbeat. So I added some more samples on top of that and then a shake or two. And the final thing in this project is the effects. And I think they're the they're the thing that fill your songs out a lot. A lot of people feel like their songs are empty and they, they don't feel full. Well, a lot of it is going to come from the synths and how you layer everything. It, everything has a part in that. But these type of drop beddings, which is what I call them, gives it that that final 10% that, you know, it can just brighten your song up a lot, whether it be tonally or give it more brightness in terms of the uh, frequency spectrum. So these together. This gives it more energy. And if I actually take these out, and then we'll throw it in. So this one's more tonal. You could loop any kind of vocal, vocal sample, maybe some kind of synth sample and just loop it like that. This one's just a crash. So this one adds tonality and this one's gonna add more, more of that bright high end. And these can be rhythmic as well. So I have a little guitar bed. This is giving us a little bit of that rhythm with some tonality too. And then I pitched it down, then I have the format up. So if you pitch things down, it's obviously gonna get deeper, but you can put the foreman up and it still preserves the, we want it to be higher in the spectrum, higher register, but if we usually pitch it down, it would actually go down in pitch. So we can pitch it down while actually making it brighter. It's really cool. And it sounds fake on its own, but overall in the mix, I don't think you can really tell. Then I filter out the lead right here, added some reverb, you guys know the drill already, but so it's not the real build up, but I figured uh, make something of it. All right, guys, that'll wrap this up. I hope I answered some of your questions about the follow project. Yeah, a lot more coming soon, and I'll talk to you guys later. Check out my brand new sound design course along with all of my samples and presets by using the links below.